uh, part of uh, a team of former speechwriters for Russian President uh, Vladimir Putin up until uh, 2014, I believe. Thank you for being with us here on, on France 24. Hello. Uh, you, first of all, your reaction to uh, that appearance by uh, Oleg Orlov, uh, the, the co-chair of Memorial uh, in a Russian court, uh, and those cheers from his supporters uh, this uh, Wednesday, this Thursday, excuse me. Well, people are still struggling. It's great. Uh, definitely, I'm happy to hear this. And uh, the, the news, uh, it's no longer news that uh, repressions are heavy in uh, Russia. In fact, uh, it's no longer uh, a metaphor to tell that Russia is becoming a totalitarian society. No, it's actually now uh, making this transformation from a regular uh, authoritarian state, which it, it used to be before the war started, into a, uh, a society, totalitarian society with elements of totalitarianism. Uh, it's, it's not like 100% uh, Stalin type, but it's certainly movement in this direction. Now uh, we can tell that the repressions in Russia are done on the scale which uh, we have not seen at least uh, since 1953, the moment of Stalin's death. Everything which was after Stalin, under other communist leaders, was lower and weaker uh, than what Putin is doing. When was the tipping point? Well, you know, it was a growing escalation since probably uh, 2018, I would say. Uh, when the when Putin was uh, re-elected, he was re-elected, and two months after his re-election, um, actually his ratings started visibly falling down. Uh, it was his last time when he was really popular, and so the protest sentiment, the protest mood started growing in the country, and Kremlin started becoming more and more oppressive, and started using this um, force. Uh, and law enforcement um, uh, more and more often instead of propaganda. So actually, previously, the political tools uh, were the main ones, while uh, force uh, was, you know, just sometimes switching on, being switched on. But now uh, it's vice versa. Propaganda is just, you know, a kind of steam which is covering the battlefield, but actually Almost 100% of Russian politics is done through law enforcement uh, bodies like FSB, uh, former KGB, and others. So let me let me uh, ask so you about this. Let me ask you about this, Abbas Galinov, because there's a lot of pop psychology going on. People guessing as to whether or not Vladimir Putin's crazy or uh, whether or not he's uh, a psychopath, as his critics might argue. Uh, as somebody who frequented him for over years. Was he somebody who was sound of mind when uh, he was running meetings or reviewing speeches? Uh, he was absolutely sober at that back in those times. He was uh, one of the, like, probably the most rational person I've ever seen. I saw him uh, many dozens of times, maybe hundreds of times, and uh, all, all, all the time he was absolutely, he, he could control himself well. He was extremely rational. He was, you know, like... Uh, a uh, very non-emotional uh, manager, this good managerial type. So at that, back at th those times, you could never imagine that he would do, he would be doing those things which uh, he is doing now. Actually, he changed uh, a lot. So you talked about 2018 as perhaps a, a tipping point. Was it that he went off the rails or that he realized he needed a rally round the flag moment to keep hold to power? It's when he started growing. Uh, well, when, that, that's the point when he started shifting the balance from uh, propaganda and campaigning all these political tools towards uh, this um, uh, force, like putting, like previously, critics could afford being critical, and Russian propaganda was trying to outperform them, was arguing with them. But after 2018, he started using. Uh, more and more like uh, just putting people to prison, for example, ousting them out of the country. 
they are refusing to register opposition politicians for e elections and and so on and so on so uh so he started using this uh what we call in a Russia administrative resource it's a uh, the, the the official power of the state in his uh, political for his political uh, to fulfill his political um, goals. So so this and, change uh, that you're describing, Abbas, uh, this predates COVID because uh, the 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 standard narrative is that during COVID, uh, Vladimir Putin became more isolated, didn't listen to as many advisors, and that may have uh, weighed on his decision making in the run up to what he deems a special military operation in Ukraine. It's uh, everything is uh, all right. Everything is right. But I, I'm trying to tell that uh, it's not that before COVID it was like one thing and in, uh, after COVID, thanks to COVID, it changed. No, uh, COVID just uh, added to what was happening already before. And COVID was actually the main problem with COVID was, was that Putin failed to perform as efficiently as people ex expected him to perform, and his ratings went down at that moment, and uh, even more. Like they started falling down in 2018, in 2020, 2021. The, this popular discontent was growing. So when we had um, uh, presidential election, uh, sorry, Duma, uh, it's our parliament elections, uh, the last national elections in the country before the war started, uh, half a year before the war started. Over three months of uh, campaign, his approval rating fell down, uh, if I'm not mistaken, seven percentage points within three months. It's, uh, it, you understand, it's the time of campaign when people should rally around him. So at that moment, probably he understood that like, he can no longer rally people around him with the domestic agenda. It was no longer working. He needed foreign policy. And it's, it was the only issue where he could still garner some kind of support, get back some of his supporters whom he was losing. That's why he needed escalation uh, with some foreign policy agenda. He, he needed sure. escalation. He, just, just a quick question, because we're running short on time. You recently uh, granted an interview to um, Radio Free Europe where y you said that... Uh, uh, today, uh, his former president, uh, his former prime minister, who briefly replaced him as president, Dmitry Medvedev, seems completely discredited in the West with his bombastic statements. Uh, you're saying he might be grooming him? Well, you mean as a successor? I can't rule this out, but a uh, few things indicate uh, this now. Like half a year ago, he elevated Medvedev, Medvedev greatly. Half a year ago, he really seemed to be like uh, on the rise again at, at that moment nobody could exp uh, could, could uh, rule out him coming back but uh two months after this in the middle of uh, of the spring uh the process stopped and now medvedev is no longer dealing with any serious issue and uh, putin like discarded him completely he's just writing his tweets in twitter and nothing else so you, you should understand, Putin is becoming very erratic. He's uh, turning quickly from one decision to the other. He's canceling his pre previous decision and coming back to the to those old canceled ones and they're restarting them. So it's always shifting. He's desperately looking for uh, for something, for some solution. He cannot find it. So he's the, 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 now he's absolutely unpredictable. So like maybe in the future he'll bring back Medvedev. Uh, we will see this. But right now at this particular moment. Nothing indicates that it can happen. Very briefly, one final question, Abbas Galimov. Uh, the um, that that uh, uh, palace intrigue that's playing out uh, in public uh, with his defense minister, the head of the Wagner Group, uh, is that just theater, or is there really no. a problem? No, it's a serious problem. It's it's uh, it's really the first. You might. It's not big exaggeration to tell that we're at witnessing the first stage of the beginning Russian, new beginning Russian revolution, just like it was in 1917. The uh, united front of the elites around Putin there, it, it's collapsing, and it's uh, actually the collapse of the institutions, because, you know, keeping united front at war, this is the desperately needed thing. Even democracies cannot afford democracy at war. And uh, this is what is exactly happening uh, in non-democratic uh, country. Uh, so this is a real collapse of the system. Abbas Galimov, many thanks for speaking with us from Tel Aviv. Thank you.